It's a busy day for this group of friends. They are working hard at baking a cake. One of them is preheating the oven. One is making the batter. One is melting the chocolate. And one is preparing the decorations for the cake. Wow! There's the cake. That's great teamwork. Did you know that different tissues in plants have different functions too? But they work as a team to keep the plant alive. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to Define plant tissue Identify the different types of tissues and Describe the different types of plant tissues. What are tissues? A group of cells that are similar in structure and that work together to achieve a particular function forms a tissue. Plants are stationary and so some of the tissues they have are dead cells which provide mechanical strength. These are the different types of plant tissues. Meristematic and permanent tissues. Look at how this plant is growing month by month. This is due to a special type of tissue called meristematic tissue. These tissues are rapidly dividing tissues. Plant growth occurs only at those points where these tissues are present. The tips of the stem and the root. Meristematic cells are living, cubical and thin-walled. Each cell has a large nucleus. Cells are closely packed with no intercellular spaces. Depending on the region where they are present, meristematic tissues are classified as apical, lateral and intercalary. Apical meristem is present at the apical or growing tips of stems and roots. It increases the length of the plant. Lateral meristem or cambium is present in the radial portion of the stem or root. It increases the girth of the plant. Intercalary meristem occurs at the base of the leaves or at the internodes. It helps to increase the length of the internode. Take a look at what eventually happens to meristematic tissues. Old meristematic cells lose the capacity to divide and transform into permanent tissues. This process of taking up a permanent shape, size and function is called differentiation. Permanent tissues can be simple or complex depending upon their structure and function. Simple permanent tissues include parenchyma, colenchyma and sclerenchyma. This is a stem. Let's explore the tissue parenchyma. Parenchyma are elongated living cells with a cell wall made of cellulose. These cells are polygonal in shape and have a large central vacuole. They also have intercellular spaces between them. Parenchyma forms ground tissue in the central cortex and the peripheral pith of stems and roots. In leaves, they contain chloroplasts and are called chlorinchyma, which help in photosynthesis. 
In aquatic plants, parenchymatous cells contain large air cavities that help in buoyancy and are called parenchyma. Parenchymatous cells in fruits and vegetables are filled with starch, which help in food storage. Let's take a look at another simple permanent tissue, the colenchyma. Colenchyma are elongated living cells with cell walls made of cellulose and pectin. These cells have little intercellular spaces. They occur in the peripheral regions of stems and leaves. Colenchyma provides mechanical support and flexibility in plants. These are sclerenchyma cells, the third type of simple permanent tissues. These are long, narrow cells with no intercellular spaces. Sclerenchyma is a dead cell with deposition of lignin in the cell wall. They occur around the vascular tissues in stems in the veins of leaves and in the covering of seeds and nuts. These tissues provide strength to the plant. Complex permanent tissues are made of more than one type of cells that coordinate together to perform a common function. These are of two types, namely xylem and phloem. Let's explore the different components of the xylem. Tracheides, vessels, xylem parenchyma, and xylem fibers. Tracheids are tubular dead cells. They transport water. Their cell wall is made of lignin, which provides mechanical support. Vessels are elongated dead cells that transport water and minerals. They are usually present in big trees. Xylem parenchyma cells are living and they store food. Xylem fibers are elongated dead cells with lignin that provide mechanical support. Let's now look at the different elements of phloem. Sieve tubes, companion cells, phloem parenchyma, and phloem fibers. Sieve tubes are elongated living cells. They transport sugar or food from the leaves to the stem and the roots. Companion cells help in conduction of food to sieve tubes. Phloem parenchyma store food. Phloem fiber provides mechanical support. Another type of tissue that is very important for plants is the protective tissue. They protect plants from the surroundings. Protective tissues include epidermis and cork. Epidermis is the outermost protective layer of roots, stems and leaves. It is one cell thick and covered with a waterproof layer called cuticle. The epidermis breaks at some places to form stomata. Stomata are surrounded by guard cells and help in gaseous exchange and loss of water. As the plant grows older, the outer protective tissue replaces the epidermal cells. This outermost layer in older roots and stems is called cork. Cork cells are dead and lack intercellular spaces. Cell walls are thickened by suberin, which makes them impermeable.